Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and horror. Today we will study the history of Mordent, a cursed and haunted past, hidden under the ruin of its ancient aristocratic families. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this video will focus on the Mordent of the classic Ravenloft setting and will consider the events and characters that existed in the domain prior to the Von Richten Guide to Ravenloft reboot. At the end of my video coverage of Mordent, from the classic Ravenloft setting, I will make some considerations and comparisons with the new version of Mordent in the Von Richten Guide to Ravenloft. Are you ready? In search of a cure for the lycanthropy condition, we travel to Mordent in search of allies. In the city of Mordenshire, we discover that a renowned monster hunter, Dr. Rudolf van Richten, has been missing for some years, and our travels also reveal no clues about the presence of the wise priestesses of Hala. With no answers or direction, we wander through the city streets until we came across the building of the modern historical society. Perhaps, among the records of the distant past, we can find a clue of those we are looking for, to show us a path and direction for our journey. Our those who wander through the misty roads and crumbling mansions of Morden, discover that this land now mostly uninhabited, was once a rich and active region that somehow found its way to decay and ruin. In many domains we have traveled before, the past is shrouded in inscrutable mysteries and secrets. In modern, however, the past is very well recorded by this population, and through the study of these valuable documents it is possible to keep track of the fate of their ancestors from the heyday to their decline. In the distant past, Mordent was a region largely uninhabited, except for small fishing communities who resided in the cove of Arden Bay. These wild and untamed lands remained forgotten until, some 600 years ago, wars and conquests by long-forgotten nations caused the region to attract the attention of settlers. The Ronier family, received these lands from their kings, with a mission to occupy and colonize this territory. The Ronier family acquired fortune and fame in this distant past through the figure of an explorer and adventurer, Jacques Ronier, who gained prestige and titles by providing services to the royal family. Thanks to his notable deeds and services to the crown, the Ronniers rose socially, and Jacques was rewarded with the government of the region of Mordent, where he moved to with his family. Jacques Ronier took control of these remote lands and began the grandiose process of expansion and colonization. He settled in the also named fishing village and established the city of Mordentshire. Soon, he managed to transform the small fishing town into an important port of maritime trade and the riches and prosperity of this unexplored land began to attract immigrants to that region. Other aristocratic families took an interest in Mordent, and the Roniers granted them the task of colonizing and managing other parts of the region on their behalf, accelerating the process of conquest of Mordent. To celebrate his success and prosperity, he began a large construction project on the outskirts of Mordenshire to build an imposing manor to his family, the House of the Griffon Hill. Something evil has been haunting that place and building since the beginning, and strange and macabre accidents have occurred throughout the construction. Despite these setbacks, the mansion was completed, and the Ronier family moved into the imposing manor. A few weeks later, however, the entire family fled in the middle of the night, claiming to have been attacked by supernatural forces, and never returned to the mansion. The prosperous and powerful Ronier family was not deterred from their goal, 
and ordered the construction of a second manor close to the cliffs, building Hitter House as their new abode, where they experienced no more ghostly hauntings. No one knows how or why this happened, but since the terrible episode at the house of the Griffon Hill, a corruption has crept into the Ronier blood. Of the six children Jacques Ronier had with his wife, five of them were born as natural lycanthropes, all of them were rats. When the truth about this curse came to light, some claimed that Jacques' past adventures finally took its toll. Others claimed that this corruption was the result of the contact with the evil forces of the house of the Griffon Hill, and others claim that this taint has always been present in one of the family branches, and was only hidden and contained by mystical means. When these children reached adolescence and the signs of their cursed condition began to manifest, the Ronniers fell from grace. Family members who were lycanthropes were hunted, and had to leave Mordant, and those who were not infected with this taint lost prestige and power after the scandal. The aristocracy of the region took advantage of the fall of their sovereigns to guarantee greater autonomy and power, and Mordant was then ruled by ten noble families. Among these aristocratic families, the Godfroys were the one who best harvested the spoils of the downfall of the Ronniers, positioning themselves as leaders of the region, and rulers of the region of Arden Bay and the city of Mordenshire. The crest of the family is a griffin holding a stout mace in one talon and a staff of wheat in the other, and below reads the motto, those that are strong survive to lead. For centuries, its members succeeded each other as leaders of the aristocratic families of those lands and their name was associated with an efficient, fair and rigorous government. Although at times a member of the lineage would show signs of weakness, insanity or incapacity, their gallery of ancestors is filled with notable leaders, administrators and rulers. Over the centuries, the society divided between the nobility and peasants began to gain its own cultural traits. The result of the mixture between the aristocracy, the natives and foreign settlers. The language spoken by the nobility and the commoners merged and came to be recognized as a single language, divided between two dialects, high and low modernish, and the lands experienced a period of prosperity. However, tragedy and decline would take hold of the region of Mordent with a tight grip. One of the first aristocratic families to suffer a tragic and macabre fate was the ancient lineage of the Bois Tribune. The coat of arms of this family showed a shield in front of the sun, being raised by a wolf and a bear, and their motto was, the land knows its true masters. This noble lineage is one of the oldest and most traditional that come to occupy the region of Mordent and their behavior show traits of a more elitist and snobbish behavior than their peers. These nobles were rarely seen in public, and they kept their distance from their subjects. Although they were a large family, all their members lived in seclusion. In their impressive abode, the Boistibu Manor, located in the forest of the ancients. Ominous rumors speculated about consanguineous relationship between these aristocrats, but no proof can be found of these practices. In the year 493 of the Barovian calendar, the entire family mysteriously disappeared overnight. Those who explored the mansion in the following morning found only a single servant there, completely sized by madness. In the empty house of the manor, they found claw marks, blood, and the partially devoured bodies of other servants, but no sign of the aristocrats. Many feared the involvement of werebees, although rumors differ whether their nobility had been devoured by the monsters or turned into them. 
despite the centuries that have passed since this event. To this day, the population avoids entering the forest of the ancients, the territory of the Boisterville family, to the point that they avoid settling near the woods or cutting timber in the region. The location where the mansion once stood has been lost and many believe that the house, like its former masters, moves through the woods to hunt trespassers. Seeing the ruined mansion in the woods is considered an ill omen and is said that those who see it will die and disappear within three full moons. The aristocratic Holsworth family met a mysterious and cursed end. Known as the Coast Lords of Mordant, the Holsworth were lords of the vast seaside territories and were responsible for building numerous lighthouses on the coast, marked by their family crest. The family coat of arms was an illuminated lighthouse flanked by two mermaids with the motto Cradle by the Waves, Guided by the Light, and their mansion stood high on the cliffs with one of its towers serving as a lighthouse. The family had a strong relationship with the sea, and many of its members led commercial naval fleets and were also captains. The story of the fall say that one of these captains one day decided to sail through a terrible storm, and his decision cost the life of one of his sailors, who fell into the waters. Before dying, carried away by the waves, the young sailor who anxiously awaited to return to dry land to the arms of his beloved to finally get married, cursed the captain. He shouted his curse, seeing that if you were forever buried from reaching home, the captain will be eternally doomed to search the oceans for an unreachable destination. When the ship finally reached shore, the sailor bride, overcome with grief, put on her wedding dress, went to the top of the cliffs and threw herself into the sea. Because of this tragedy, the northern cliff walls are known as the Pale Lady and the southern ones, the Ashen Men, with the high walls eternally separated by the Iron Bay. Shortly thereafter, the captain from the Holsworth family was seized by an obsession and began to lay plans to find a distant island in the ocean, a location that came to him in his dreams. This fateful voyage was finally accomplished but nor the captain or the sailor involved in this project ever returned. Over the years, every generation, one or two family members would be taken by this madness and they would disappear into the seas, following insane visions about a mysterious island. Such was the obsession that took over the minds of the Hallsworth that nothing served to appease the madness. They couldn't find willing sailors, some of them have thrown themselves into the waters, swimming to their deaths. Not even locking and confining them as madmen had worked, having one of these nobles mysteriously disappeared into a pool of sea-scented water while locked in his quarters. The proportion of aristocrats taken by madness increased with the passage of time and the last known member of the family disappeared in the year 543 of the Barovian calendar, when he sailed into the unknown. Another aristocratic family that met its end shortly afterwards was the Holloway family. This family was not originally of noble blood, but rose to power from wealthy and prosperous merchants, who owned a famous tavern on the banks of the Arden River in the city of Stadwell. They rose as aristocrats after agreements and alliance with the Godfroy and Blackburn Bruce families. Their coat of arms was a ferryman, surrounded by a circle of coins, and their motto was, only by action does a man succeed. Their mansion sat on the hill by the island river, and the family was known for their fondness for balls and openly exposed their wealth to the fine jewelry and ornaments they wore. 
its prosperity marked the city of Stedwall as one of the most prosperous of Mordant at the time, which concentrated most of the region's trade that crossed the Arden River by ferry. However, the prosperity that came from the trade across the river was replaced by terror. One night, in the year 502 of the Barovian calendar, the son and heir of the Holloway family and his bride disappeared mysteriously when the mist rose and covered the river and its banks. Their bodies were found in the waters afterwards, victims of foul murder. Over the next years, other family members began to disappear. Some were never found, and others had their corpses fully or partially found on the banks of the river, along with serfs or trading partners who were with them at the time of their death. Between the years 502 and 543 of the Barovian calendar, almost the entire family was wiped out. Bounties were placed on the assassin's head, but many claimed that a ghostly ferryman or other monstrosities created by the mists were hunting the aristocrats. Fear drove people away from the prosperous stairwell, and the last members of the Holloway family retreated inside the mansion, fearing the lurking death, where its last members are believed to have withered and perished. To this day, some claim to see strange lights in the abandoned mansion, and speculate whether the Holloways still inhabit their abode, whether living or dead. While this treasure is plaguing the noble families, the Godfroy family remained firmly in power. Despite this, the family's number declined, and their heirs had fewer and fewer children. Over the years, the Godfrey family has merged with several other aristocratic families of the region. Among these marriage ties, some women in the family became members of the Weathermay and Foxgrove families, both of whom live in Mordenshire. Even this mighty bloodline would be doomed to end in tragedy. The last family member to bear the surname was Lord Wilfred Godfrey. Lord Wilfred was married to a much younger wife, the beautiful Estelle Weathermay, and together they had a daughter, Lydia Godfrey. The austere ruler inherited the sumptuous mansion known as the House of the Griffon Hill, a place many claimed to be haunted. Godfrey dismissed such ideas as preposterous and moved there with his wife and daughter. Bad luck and misfortune were not long in coming. Stell and Lydia Godfroy were murdered by an angry Lord Wilfred Godfroy, who beat them to death with his cane. He simulated a strange and suspicious accident, telling everyone that they were trampled by wild horses. However, the tormented Lord Wilfred Godfroy eventually succumbed to the pressure, and at the dawn of the first day of the year 579 of the Barovian calendar, he committed suicide in the house of the Griffon Hill, where he hanged himself, putting an end to his line. He confessed his crimes in a letter, stating that he was haunted by the ghost of his wife and doctor. With no surviving Godfrey present, the leadership and rule of those lands fell to the Weathermay family, to whom they had blood ties, and Lord Byron Weathermay assumed the title and property. The Weathermay family, who used to occupy the Hitter House, has at its coat of arms the image of two mastiffs flanking an open book with the motto, No one would survive but for the efforts of those whom history has forgotten. That same year, 579 of the Barovian calendar, the Weathermay family would face one of their greatest challenges, and Mordant would be forever changed, being swallowed up by the mists. The events surrounding these happenings are poorly recorded, and little details are known. A wave of madness appeared to have swept through the city of Mordenshire, with the large records of admissions to an insane asylum, where serious allegations and accusations 
that people were behaving strangely, not recognizing their relatives, and even claiming that they were possessed by evil forces. Most of the superstitious population of Mordant claim that these strange events are the fault of experiments conducted by an alchemist, and that he was the one who caused Mordant to be swallowed by the mists, being isolated and removed from his original homeworld. Records point that shortly after the death of Lord Wilfred Godfrey, the Wedermay family rented the house of the Griffon Hill to a foreigner named Strad von Zarovich, who claimed to be an alchemist and sought the seclusion of the manor to concentrate on his work. The alchemist's journals shows that he was a brilliant man, but tormented by dark thoughts and terrible dreams as if his mind or soul were shared with a macabre entity. His main project involved the construction of a machine known as the Apparatus, capable of separating or transferring the soul of an individual. Driven by madness, he built the machine and used it on himself to become separated from the dark essence that torment his soul. This experience also brought the alchemist into a state of stress and on the verge of madness. He fled in panic from the house of the Griffon Hill on a stormy night and was eventually rescued by the Wedermay, reaching Hater House. The alchemist became romantically involved with Virginia Wedermay, with whom he intended to marry. But the union of these families was interrupted by more tragic events that will come to befall Mordant. Many of you may be wondering, what was the alchemist's relationship with the infamous Count Strad von Zarovich of Barovia? Although we may never fully understand what happened in Mordant, evidence points to the fact that the alchemist and his dark counterpart had a direct connection with Count Strad von Zarovich and with the macabre experiments that he and Azalin Rex, until then his ally, carried out in the lands of Barovia to try to escape the demiplane of dread. More than that, disturbing evidence points to the sinister presence of Count Strad and Azalin Rex in the past of Morden, and the apparatus was likely used to exchange the souls of unfortunate Morden denizens for creatures of darkness in the service of their masters. This entire sinister plot ended with a terrible conflict at the Wedermay family mausoleum that resulted in the destruction of the alchemist and the evil presence of Strad, as well as the infamous machine known as the Apparatus. These events mark Mordant's transition to the demiplane of Dread, and the region was surrounded by mists that covered its entire territory for months, isolating it from contact with the world to which it previously belonged. This sinister event also marked the disappearance of other two ancient aristocratic bloodlines. The Mornsworth family had as a coat of arms a figure in robes, holding in one skeletal hand the cup of life, and in other normal hand an hourglass. Their motto was Death make all men equal, life make all men brother. They were masters over the veil of twilight, and their family had a strong connection with religion and the divine. Many of its members housed scholars, cleric and philosophers, who were dedicated to the study of the mysteries of death and afterlife. Their knowledge and skills were valued throughout Mordant and they were respected by aristocracy and commoners alike, becoming often hired as spiritual advisors or to placate restless spirits and undead. This family often used their fortune to acquire land for the construction of cemeteries, and the lands that surround their ancestral abode are marked by numerous tombs and mausoleums where the family constantly mounted vigil for the dead. All families of Mordant could ask these nobles for support to bury their dead for free in their cemeteries, avoiding the risk that their spirits would become enraged and return from the grave. After the destruction of the apparatus, 
and the events that led to the confrontation of the alchemist and Count Strad. The Mornsworth family began to chase strange rumors about the growing presence of the undead and the involvement of the rival Blackburn Bruce family in acquiring parts of the apparatus. However, suddenly, all family members were called to their family's ancestral manor for a secret ceremony due to strange visions and sinister prophecies received by the elders. The family's fate is a mystery, and no one knows if the secret ceremony took place, but no other family members were ever seen again. When the mists finally receded from Mordant, at the end of the year 579, those who visited the cemeteries found the mansion abandoned. Despite this, to this day, some claim that new graves and headstones can be seen in their cemeteries, even after centuries of neglect, with strange names, dates and unknown locations. Another aristocratic family that disappeared because of the events that dragged Morden into the mists was the Blackburn Bruce family that ruled the region around the town of Blackburn's Crossing. Owns two distinct families, of prosperous merchants, the Blackburns and the Bruce united their families to achieve their goals and rise to aristocracy, forming a single family. Their symbol were two gentlemen shaking hands over a river stream. One of them carries a compass and the other a book, and their motto was, the waters of knowledge sate only those who drink deepest. The family was known for its dedication to the study of arcane arts, occultism and alchemy, which brought them the distrust of the population. They were rivals with the Mornsworth family, who seemed to be always vigilant of their actions. When events involving the alchemists and Count Strad dragged the lands of Mordant into the demiplane of dread, covering the entire region in mists for months, the angry populace searched for a scapegoat to blame. When the Mornsworth accused the Blackburn Bruce of trying to obtain the pieces of the apparatus machine, the pressure on the family became too much. Its members abandoned their post as aristocrats, adopting new names and identities to escape the angry mob. They escaped with valuable tomes of forbidden knowledge and as many resources as they could carry and to this day they are believed to dwell in remote regions of Morden, conducting unholy experiments in secret. One of the Morden's most powerful and prosperous families has met its end after a major scandal. The Gualdamons were rulers over the lightless wood and were known for their passion for the theater and for granting shelter and sanctuary to anyone who swore allegiance to them. Many criminals, fugitives and outcasts fled to their woods to for support and were given a second chance, knowing that betraying their allegiance to the Gualdamons would mean death. The Gualdamon family had their coat of arms with two imps back to back, one with a smiling face and the other crying. They have as their motto, approach friends and enemies alike with a smile for boats are worthy of this one. Despite being known for being inviting and friendly, sinister rumors also circulated around the family, who were sometimes accused of practicing dark arcane arts, the disappearance of some servants, and rumors of the sacrifice of firstborn doctors in rituals, prompted an investigation against the family in 621 of the Barovian calendar. A group of adventurers discovered that the family had an ancient evil pact with a demonic entity known as Rogal, the Smiling One. Along with a revolt of servants, they exterminated the oldest members of the family, but some Gualdamon managed to fled and hide in the lightest wood. The local population hunted and persecuted the Gualdamon for years exterminating the ancient demon-worshipping aristocrats, 
and the last living water moon was seen in the year 673 of the Barovian calendar. Despite this, rumors of demonic influence persist in the region to this day, and the forests hide many Calibans, born deformed by the influence of evil forces. Another aristocratic family that disappeared under macabre circumstances was the Scott Matter, who ruled over the Grey Marsh region. Their coats of arms showed an aristocrat and a farmer greeting each other over a basket of food, and with the motto, the work of the hands is the joy of the soul. Known for their generosity and efforts made, together with their subjects, to make the Grey Heat a thriving agricultural region, they became famous for their skills as artisans. The last generation of this family was known for two skilled painters, brothers Andrew and Margaret. Their works achieved prominence and attracted the attention of a mysterious stranger named Lord Sittington Grey, who corresponded with both to acquire and commission their works. The day this mysterious patron came to visit the family for dinner, their fate was sealed. When servants came into the hall after a while, they saw Lord Sittington disappear into thin air with a macabre laugh before a canvas, where family members appeared to be imprisoned in the painting with a look of despair. Each night, another member of the family mysteriously disappeared, only to be seen in the old painting until they all disappeared. After that, their mansion was closed and sealed by the locals, and this haunted gallery remains forever immersed in darkness. One of the last aristocratic families to disappear was the Westcote family, who ruled over the region that is now home to the Great Moor, and if the legends are correct, they are the cause of the swamp constant expansion. Their coat of arms was an image of a man armed with a sword, carrying a lantern alongside a hound, with a motto that reads, Those who are righteous receive what they deserve. The fall of this family began with the tragic events of a failed marriage. Burton Westcote was about to participate in an arranged marriage with Anna, a bride from a wealthy family from a distant domain of the Land of the Mists. In 643 of the Barovian calendar, on the wedding night, some conflict took place in the kitchen of the Westcote Manor, between the bride Anna and the groom's brother, Michael Westcote. While the conflict reasons and details remain a mystery, it is certain that Anna murdered Michael Westcote, and then fled the manor. Burton, after discovering his brother's murder and his bride's escapade, unleashed his hounds to chase Anna through the swamps. The chase resulted in Anna's death, slowly drowning in a pit of mud, but not before she cursed Burton and doomed the Westcott lineage. Since then, the swamp has expanded around the Westcott Manor, and slowly, its servants have abandoned their former masters. Lord of a barren swamp, haunted by spectral hounds, Burton remained alive and cursed to an eternity alone, forced to drink the putrid waters that surrounded him. In 743 of the Barovian calendar, a party of adventurers is said to have intervened in the situation seeking a means to rid the swamp of its ghostly hounds and the curse of the Westcote family. But the fate of the immortal Burton Westcote remains uncertain. In addition to the tragic record of the fall of the traditional families of Mordant, it is necessary to highlight other important events that took place in these regions, which would cause great impact in the land of the mists. The fate of Ezra began in the domain of Mordant, when Ezra's first revelation is natured Yaakov Dislisnia in the year 666 of the Barovian calendar. Yaakov was the son of Lev Dislisnia, a member of a noble family who for years lived in seclusion in Barovia, 
but who, with the unveiling of new lands through the mists, began their diaspora and spread across the many domains. When he was 25 years old, Yaakov suffered a seizure while riding, and after awakening from a feverish period, he woke up claiming to be the messenger of a deity named Ezra. Still in bed, he wrote the first book of Ezra, containing the first revelation of his goddess, and relating her origin myth and teachings. For many years, Yaakov tried to spread the word of his new faith and religion, but he was seen as a madman and fanatic, and was unsuccessful. Yaakov eventually succeeded in founding the Church of Ezra in distant lands, in the newly unveiled domain of Borka, where his sister became a ruler. However, Ezra's fate would return to the lands of Mordant, where it would become the main religion. With the death of Yaakov de Lisnia, by poisoning in Borka, a schism occurred in the Church of Ezra, and the dissenting members decided to break away from the mother church. Under the leadership of Felix Watcher, they migrated to Mordant in 698 of the Barovian calendar, with some of their allies and followers. There he established a new headquarters in the chapel of the Pure Hearts, and began to preach a new, more open and compassionate view of the faith. In the year 699 of the Barovian calendar, Felix claimed to have received visions and revelations about his faith, and based on these visions he wrote the second book of Ezra. The rift in Ezra's church lasted for years, until they were finally recognized as a legitimate sect, and the second bastion of the faith of Ezra was created, attached to the authority of the central bastion of the modern church of Burka. Currently, the only remaining aristocratic family in Warden is the Wadamei, but even this family is in crisis. The aging Lord Jules will soon be no longer able to rule, and the other members of his family refuse to assume the mantle of leadership. It was Lord Jules Wedermay who signed the Treaty of the Four Towers, including Mordant as one of the Allied nations against attacks and invasions by Falkovnia. One of the few acts in which he represented the region of Morden as a nation leader and participated in the domain foreign policy. Despite surviving through the years when all aristocratic families fell, many believe that a sinister fate also awaits the Wadamay family, due to their connection to the blood legacy of the cursed Godfrey family. It is said that many of its members are sensitive to the spirit world and live in a fine line between this world and the afterlife. Our research doesn't let us to uncover clues to the whereabouts of Van Richten or the Hollow Witches but it does give us an idea about our next steps. We have found records of a distant cousin of the Weathermaids, who claimed to be a sensitive to the spirit world, and capable of unlocking hidden secrets from the dead. Perhaps, if we access the knowledge from the spirit world, we can learn more about Dr. Rudolf von Richten's fate, and uncover if the natural werewolf that infected us still lives in Verbrek. Join us, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications, and let's find this medium to participate in this session to contact spirits and unlock the secrets of Mordant.